this one up. And now lift the other one up. Oh. <laughs> okay. Bring both these up. Go ahead and sit up. What's up, Modern Manual Therapy viewers? It's Dr. E, back with Dr. Daniel Palmer at Edge Rehab and Sports Science in Buffalo, New York. And I just wanted to take some time and just explain an easier way to do SIJ testing. I think patients absolutely expect, um, if they've been to a certain type of practitioner or pathoanatomical practitioner or um, a traditional chiropractor, that they're gonna to be told their hips are out of place and maybe they have the supinolongsit test on them or what I call the worst test in the world, the gelé test or the stork test. If you are currently in school or just shortly afterward or you're maybe going through a manual therapy residency and you've been taught the stork test or think about initially when you were taught it, there's a reason why it's probably one of the worst tests ever invented. It's because it's not intuitive at all, right? Like you've been practicing 15 years. Right. And do you remember, I remember doing it, and first of all, if you could even find, like it's all awkward, right? We're supposed to be comfortable palpating people's sacrum and PSIS. If you could even find them, and then you have them step up and down, single leg step up or march. It was never intuitive to me. Like I literally used to have to excuse myself from the room. I would draw the curtain and think about, I would do this in my head and then think about, okay, so if this moves early or if this moves later, if this moves first, is it right on right, is it left on left? There, and then I would do the diagonal in my head. And, you know, even when I teach this in my classes, I always see people laughing because I know they went through that struggle. If you've been through that struggle, that's the reason why it's the worst test ever. How can it be reliable? Like the least we could have in any test is reliability. How can it be reliable if it's not intuitive? If something immediately makes sense, like can you touch your toes, does it hurt or not, a la selective functional movement assessment, that's reliable because it only requires eyes and ears. As soon as you put palpation on it, all, thing, all bets are out the window. Then you put motion into the palpation and then diagonals and minutia, forget it. But I just wanna do um, two things. So the first one is what's an easier way to sell if someone is a true SIJ Dysfunction. First of all, it's less than 10% of all low back problems. Um, but what you can do, uh, similar to Laslet's, is just do repeated motions. You can do repeated flexion, repeated extension, repeated side glides. If that affects their symptoms, it's most likely not a true SIJ. If they have pain below the knee, it's most likely not a true SIJ. Um, so again, most, even if they say it hurts right here, I'm like, I don't care if it hurts right in your SIJ, because if, if, if it's affected, by repeated flexion, repeated extension, or repeated side glides. Let's just call it lumbogenic for now.